Alright, so we've already established um, the VO2 Max in part one of this series. So this is going to be a three part series. Um, we're now going to be discussing how to find the ventilatory thresholds. Okay, so I do this through two criteria. The first criteria is the V-slope. Okay, so we're going to be looking for VT1 and VT2, both found using the V-slope method. So we go back to our raw data, which if you didn't see where I got to with this, check out part A in the series. Okay, so to find the V-slope, we got these two ones here. So we've got VO2 in absolute terms and VCO2 in absolute terms. So we want to turn that into a graph. So these two can compare themselves against each other. All right, that gives us something like so. All right, so that on itself doesn't really look like um, too much. You can see it looks like a, a bit of a line and you can see that it increases. So as um, oxygen increases, so does CO2. But the inflection points within this graph are important and that's how we establish the VT1 and VT2. So to see that more clearly, we want to first make sure both of our axes are in the same um, numbers. So you can see it goes up to 6,000 here and this one only to 5,000. I'm going to change that to make this one also go to 6,000. So that's important. So you're measuring apples against apples. All right. The second thing I want to do before I forget which graph it is, is I want to label the graph. So we're going to call this one V slope. And you'll notice like each little dot, it's going to be hard to determine where on the table these dots lie. So when you're trying to say, oh, does 1,000 or does 2,000 um, oxygen compare to 2,000 CO2, you want to make sure that there's little lines, so grid lines, that you can compare um, where each metric comes along. So I'm just going to right click on that, right click on that and go add minor grid lines. And that way we can see just those smaller nuances between the measurements. So between 2000 and 3000, it's too much of a jump. So this way, we know that that one here on this little minor grid line is 2200, 2400, 600, 800, etc. back to 3000. The next part we want to make sure we've got labeled is our axes. So we go to add chart element, axes titles, primary horizontal. So the bottom one here, that is going to be VO2 and the unit is milliliters a minute. And we'll do our vertical axes and that's CO2 in milliliters a minute. All right. The next part I want to make sure is that we're equally measured. So we're going to turn these rectangles. You can sort of see the line goes across there and down. We're going to turn that into squares. So to do that, we've just got to stretch it down. And that way we're going to be able to accurately assess where these inflection points are. So that looks a bit closer towards a square. So I'm just going to copy that. So I go control C and bring it over to my chart. So criterion one, we have the V slope method. All right. Now eyeballing it can be very, very difficult. What I've always found is an easy way to establish it is to bring in shapes and just straight lines. That way you can measure across and you can sort of see that an inflection point occurs around there. And then another one. 
So we insert a shape, another line, and that goes up there. But you can also see there's a point where it sort of deviates up to. So that's sort of following there. And you just got to eyeball where you think that that deviates. So you can see that this chunk here is sitting higher than these ones. And it's probably more like that actually. Yeah. It's probably there where it deviates. So as you can see, I'm just going off this. Um, it takes a, a little bit of adjustments to find these markers. And then we can see another line there. All right. So now we can see where our points occurred. All right. There's a point here and a point here. So just to make it clear for the client and ourselves. So we insert another one, a shape, and we're just going to draw a straight line down here at each point. So this was then going to be our VT um, one, and then we're going to insert, we're going to do another shape, and we've got another one here at our VT two. And then just so the client can have a bit of ease, I'm going to label these markers, right? So we're going to insert a text box, draw a text box. So this is our VT1. Insert another text box. And this is our VT2. So we're going to insert a shape. We'll draw a little arrow so the arrow points to where our line is. Insert shape. And yeah. Now I like a box around it. It just makes it look like you can see it a bit clearer. All right. So then we can see where very clearly these different inflection points are. And that's how we identify the thresholds. So VT1 is your aerobic threshold and VT2 is your anaerobic threshold. So now we can see that we've got these lines in. We just track them down. Sorry, I moved that accidentally. We just track these lines down to where they meet. So we can see that at VT1 occurred at 2,100 2,400, 2,400 milliliters of O2. And then VT2, it occurred, so that's not quite at that 3,800, it's sort of halfway between, so this was probably more like 3,700 mils of O2. All right. Then once we've found that, that alone is not really going to tell us what the threshold is. We've got to now convert where these markers, where 2,400 mils of O2 happened against the time. So we go back into our graph. So we're looking for VT1 first. So VT1, it occurred at 2,400 mil. So we just go up, find 2,400 mil. So you're never going to find it exactly, unless you're very lucky, but it occurs somewhere around this 146 to 156 uh, second mark, right? So then we know that VT1 occurred at 156 seconds. So then we just go back to where 156 seconds occurred wattage wise. So that occurred in the point between 
in the point between 131 and 142 watts. So VT1 occurred here. Now I like to highlight VT1 in green, just so everybody can clearly see and the client can clearly see where this marker occurred. All right, and we just do the same thing for VT2. So VT2 <clears throat> was 3,700 mils. And we go back into our chart, follow that down. Where does VT, VO2 turn into 3,400 mils, 3,700 mils? So it's about here, isn't it? It's about the 512 second mark. So here, this is your seconds into the test. At the 512 second mark, we hit 3,700 um, mils of oxygen consumption. At that stage of the test, we go back here. So, at, sorry, what, what was that? It was 512. So, at 512 seconds, that was just after this 244 measurement. So, it was in this bracket here. So, you always go the higher one. So I'm just going to highlight that in red, just the same way. So red highlights the anaerobic threshold, VT2, and green, that's going to highlight your aerobic threshold. All right, guys, I hope that helped clear a few things up. Um, let me know if you've got any questions on about how to find um, the thresholds using the V-slope method. It is a really handy one, and it really does illustrate well to both yourself and the client um, where these markers are because it's quite easy to visually see it once you get those lines up. All right, guys. There is another method of finding the ventilatory thresholds, um, which we're going to explore in just a minute. So be sure to check out that video. It's going to be up in this corner. And until next time, take care.